Nathan, what's up? I need to run a flash column and I've never run one before. I heard you're the best in lab and I was wondering if you could teach me. Sure, I'm just about to run one if you want to help. How much do you know about flash chromatography? Well, I've read the original flash paper and learned that it's a fast and efficient method of separating compounds even with a small RF difference. But I also read that you need to use a smaller size silica particle and use air to push the effluent through. That's correct. The smaller size particle implies that there's a higher surface area to weight ratio. Therefore, you can separate compounds more effectively. Using air pressure also shortens the time it takes to run a column. I already found good conditions for separating my compound on TLC. I see your RF is 0.3 to 0.4. That's right where it should be, right? Yes, I'm planning on running a gradient, starting with less polar petroleum ether and going to more polar ethyl acetate. You also need to consider the ratio of silica gel to compound. The correct ratio should be about 100 to 1 silica gel to crude. But isn't it really messy to weigh silica gel? Yes, but we don't actually have to weigh it. The density of silica is about 0.5. We have a gram of crude compound and therefore need about 100 grams of silica, which equates to 200 milliliters. Now we can pick the size column that we need. The paper mentioned the column height should be 5 to 6 inches. Is that important? Yes. You want to keep the silica level height fixed. If you have more or less compound to separate, you simply change the diameter of your column to accommodate the amount of silica you have. This column will do. Before I pack the column, I always inspect it for any cracks. This one looks fine. Obviously, working with pressurized air can be dangerous and we need to take precautions to prevent overpressurization or the column could explode. The air pressure is very high and therefore we install this pressure regulator to control the pressure. You can set the maximum pressure and then lock it by pushing the ring. Even if there are sudden pressure changes in the system, this regulator prevents overpressure. For extra precaution, I added this connector to the tube. It serves as a weak point, so if too much pressure develops in the column, the connector will pop. This column has a glass frit, but other columns may not have it. In that case, you need to use cotton or glass wool to plug the bottom, and then pour some sand over it. I place the Erlenmeyer above a piece of paper in case some silica spills. That'll make cleanup easy. Once I have the correct volume of silica, I add enough solvent to make a slurry. The slurry shouldn't be too thick or it will trap air bubbles. Now we're ready to pack the column. The secret for good separation is even packing. I first fill the column with solvent and open the valve. Then I add the slurry through the funnel. This procedure allows the silica to set evenly. An alternate method is called dry packing. You add dry silica gel to the column and flush with solvent. Continue flushing until all air bubbles are expelled and the column feels cool. I use air pressure to push most of the solvent through, but keep about an inch of it on top. At this point, I like to add a layer of sand for protecting the surface of the silica. Now I can bring the solvent to the level of the sand, and then we are ready to load the column. Loading the column requires that the crude is totally soluble in a minimal amount of solvent, usually a concentration of about 25%. Solids may block the flow or slowly dissolve during the run and complicate separation. If you see precipitate, then you need to filter the solution and check the solid, or find another solvent to run the column in. Once your solution is ready to load, use a short pipette to load the column. Longer pipettes have a tendency to break, so I avoid them. I'm adding the solution on the walls of the column in a circular motion. Now I open the valve and allow the solution to percolate into the silica. Now I add a little more solvent to wash the residue, and I load it. This procedure is known as wet loading, but sometimes you have to use dry loading. So when would you need to use dry loading? Sometimes your compound isn't soluble in the solvent you're gonna use for your column and you need a more polar solvent. Obviously loading in a more polar solvent can create issues with separation. To get around this, we use dry loading. First we dissolve the crude in a polar solvent and then we add silica gel. Now we evaporate the solvent until we get a free flowing powder. This process results in absorbing the compounds onto the surface of the silica while getting rid of the polar solvent. Now we add the powder on top of the silica column and start with our desired solvent. That's a cool solution. Now I add a layer of solvent with a pipette since adding the solvent directly through a funnel will disturb the surface. After an inch of solvent is added, I can use the funnel. The safest way to run a column is to make sure the sash is between the column and you. It will best protect you in case of an explosion. Double check that you open the valve before applying air pressure. I read that a rate of two inches per minute gives you the best separation. Is that true? 
Yeah, people that didn't read the paper believe that running the column slower actually gives them better separation. I like to collect fractions by hand, but others may move the whole tube rack. I'll show you what to do, but you'll find what works best for you. Every several fractions, I run a TLC and then decide how to continue with the solvent gradient. Let me go run the TLC. It's better to use several stains before you decide which fractions to combine. I'll collect the fractions and evaporate. Never discard any fraction until you've confirmed its identity by NMR. Sure, I guess it's better safe than sorry. Now that we know we have our compound, we can dry the column. Thanks, Christy. That was a great demo. No problem. Good luck with your first column. Thanks.